then you still are able to carry the, uh, uh, maintain the load carrying capacity. That's the advantage of fiber after cracking, right? So most of you work on FRC, so you know that better. Uh, so, so this is another uh, figure of that. So a <coughs> lot of applications were identified and we focused on a few precast uh, items. And these are real structures actually uh, constructed in Europe. So everything worked out very well. This is absolutely no reinforcement in these walls. All that we have is around the periphery. And some of these items were, not this one, but some of these items were, I, were designed by me. I designed some of these and uh, implemented these. And you can pump it just like normal concrete, no problem. And you can have, in, uh, you know, cutouts, everything, exactly like normal concrete, no problem. So if I don't tell you where these uh, <coughs> elements are, just minibar elements, you cannot even tell. This wall is actually, has absolutely no reinforcement. This wall has no reinforcement at all. Just the uh, minibar reinforcement, that's all it has. Same thing here, this wall is also minibar wall. So the implementation was very, very simple and they were able to use that very nicely. And this wall, th th this is what you can see, if you, can you turn off the lights please? Yeah, you see how much reinforcement is there? Absolutely nothing, nothing. Only a few dowel bars, uh, bars sticking out of the foundation wall. That's all, that's all. And then you slap your, uh, you know, the uh, formwork here, and then you start pumping from the top. That's all. So, so it is sometimes a mini bar is very expensive product because it's a very small diameter uh, FRP bar, right? Many of you are thinking, oh, if there are so many disadvantages to FRP, then why even bother trying to use it? Look at this, they made it work because the reason that it is cost effective is you eliminated all the reinforcement, which is not much. The price of reinforcement in is very, very, it's very cheap, relatively speaking. The most cost is placing it, right? tying it, placing it, that's, that costs more than the actual reinforcement. So that, that part is totally removed. So that's the reason it became very, very cost effective. And then the finish is very good. Look at this. This finish is very good. I'll take it any day of the day, a week. No problem. So beautiful. White concrete. That's why I was asking Dr. Das, the computer science building, is it precast? It looks like that. This one looks like that. What they do, they make this and then they actually polish it. When you polish it, that's, what, that's the surface you get. Very, very beautiful. It, it looks like marble. So beautiful. <coughs> another picture of another structure. Again, this is the uh, polished surface. Looks very nice, very nice. All in Europe. So, and then we have been working on several other items. We were starting a big uh, plant in Qatar, but it did not go anywhere. There were some problems. We did not, <coughs> the investor backed out. Otherwise, it would be a very big operation. But. Uh, other than that, in, uh, in Norway, they have a plant, they have a couple of plants in other places, they have, and they're selling minibar very well. It's a little bit expensive, but that's, that's, for anything good, you have to spend money. So there are other, uh, other applications. Um, the good thing about minibar, see, uh, this one here is all minibar concrete, okay? So this is the train tracks. Train tracks, uh, ideally, the concrete here should be non-magnetic, no magnetic effects, because those trains are very high, very sophisticated trains, and they have a lot of instrumentation and stuff like that. So they don't want any interference with uh, metal reinforcement. So all of this is minibar concrete. You cannot tell the difference. You will not know it. Then floating structures. 
So you make precast concrete elements with mini bar concrete, no reinforcement. That's the whole point, except for a few uh, bars here and there which need which are needed for structural integrity. In most cases, shear walls you don't really need much reinforcement. It's mostly distribution steel that that uh, will dictate or govern your design. So you use this kind of mini bars or even FRP bars. That's, that's a good place to uh, use non-magnetic FRP bars. Same thing here. Precast elements, very uh, effective. And then, like I said the other day, it is uh, <coughs> concrete comes in uh, in packages, right? So if you want to use the finishing concrete here, comes in packages. That's all. You take the package, open it, mix some water, and that's ready to spread. So that mini bar product, if you add to those packages, it works very well. So that's another advantage. And of course, you can make it more uh, artistic. It's uh, in uh, in Middle Eastern countries, they like this kind of nice decorative concrete, so they have that. And you can see how the fiber is able to bridge between cracks. So this, of course, has totally, it's, it's completely failed. But before failure, the minibar is able to bridge the cracks and see the amount of deflection you get, very large deflection. At the same time, it's able to carry the load. So that's a very good thing. So again, there are other applications, pipe applications. And in short, what I was trying to, uh, the message I wanted to uh, deliver in this, in this uh, <coughs> presentation is FRP is expensive material, no doubt. But if you are, ab if you are able to use your imagination, your uh, skills to, to deliver a product which is overall cheaper or at least same cost as the traditional product, you will still be able to be successful. You can be successful. Does it make sense? All right. So now I'm ready for questions on, on this presentation. All this work was done in our uh, University of Akron. My students did everything. Prince Bar did some of the mm, tests, but that was not his project. But any questions? You are tired of listening to me. I know that. Maybe light on. Light on. Okay. <laughs> are you tired of listening to me? <laughs> I won't be lecturing tomorrow, okay? <laughs> so you'll have some relief. So now I'll show you some real big testing, real, real big testing. So yes, I, not bridges, but I can show not the beams. I'll show you something which is more exciting. <laughs> Oh, Princess then? Yeah, but those are traditional beams. <laughs> it's not exciting anymore. Oh, but in South, oh yeah, yeah, those are really good ones. Those are really good. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean, I thought Prince Bas uh, videos from his work. Okay, now this may be, I, I, I'm not guaranteeing interesting uh, stuff, but I may, I'll, it is different stuff. It's, it, it's totally different thing, okay? It's a little bit older project, uh, about three, four years back, we finished this. So, Rockfall Concrete Barrier Evaluation and Design Criteria. It's a, it was, for me, one of my biggest project until this point. It's more than $1.1 million, which is, which is a lot of money. So, <clears throat> again, we'll show you some, uh, the background, the test results, and then the uh, implementation and stuff like that. So, whenever you have slopes, cut, cut slopes, like here you see rocks, 
this rock is cut and then you make your highway here, right? So what happens is uh, these rocks are loose when they, when they do actual uh, rock cutting, the blasting. These rocks can get cracked and they can fall anytime. So what they normally do is they provide some kind of some kind of barrier, okay? So <clears throat> the rock fall can be very, very scary. I'll show you a video of the rock fall. So let's see that. I don't know if it's still available, but if it is, it'll be nice. Oh, I don't have internet connection. No, no I, I will, I'll, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll run from here, from my... Okay, look at this. Oops. I can't see it. Just give me a minute, okay? I'll try to connect. It's a, it's a beautiful video. You must see what happens. It is, it is very nice. Hmm? But that will that that video is, seems to be like twenty minutes. So anyway. Uh, I have a very small clipping of that. I had that, but I don't know where it went away, but, but it should be there. Sorry. Okay. Doesn't matter. This will, will. Yeah, I think this link is there. You can see, okay? It's yeah. Okay, so this rock can fall on the road and you can imagine what can happen if, if that happens. It's a very, very scary thing. So there are a lot of, uh, lots of um, theoretical models for, for rock fall mechanisms. We'll not go over that. It's very, very uh, time consuming to go through this. So let us uh, do this. So how does... Uh, <coughs> Department of Transportation, they use this kind of concrete barriers to contain the rolling rocks. If you have a rolling rock, you have this type of precast barriers and they assume that it will work. If, if you have such a big rock, it doesn't work. There are two types of barriers. One is precast barriers, one is cast in place barrier. So this cast in place barrier is done by slip form. So you can make that continuously uh, in a very short time. And in one state, you can have hundreds and hundreds of miles of this kind of concrete barriers. Imagine the amount of concrete that goes into all these barriers, a lot. So the Department of Transport, they have their own standard drawings. So they have their reinforcement details. We'll, we'll not go into all these details, but um, so what we did was those barriers are designed for crash, uh, they are based on crash tests for vehicles, not for rocks. So we need to somehow verify those for rock fall prevention or rock fall protection. So what we did was we, we uh, rented one facility close to my university. And we did very large full-scale tests. You can see this. This is uh, an aerial shot. So here we have the barrier. And then we actually used cranes to hit this barrier with rocks, or manufactured rocks. That's what we did. So in phase one, we started with a small uh, arrangement. This small is not really small. It is quite big, actually. These full-scale barriers. Can you turn on the light? So you, you can see we placed this uh, front end loader. We suspended a ball here, a wrecking ball, a 
big ball, steel ball, and then we hit these barriers at different locations to find out the impact uh, behavior of, of these, of these uh, barriers. Okay? So one was cast in situ, or uh, the CIP barrier, one is precast barrier, so we have asphalt pavements, concrete pavements. I'm not presenting the theoretical work, I'm just presenting the uh, experimental work. So it makes it easier for you, easier for me. So we did full scale. These are all full scale uh, barriers. So in cross section, that's what it looked like. And we had very high speed cameras and high speed uh, sensors, all kinds of uh, accelerometers, high speed cameras to capture the behavior of these barriers at the time of impact. Imagine you're dropping a ball from this height, comes down, it hits the barrier, it is, it's all over in fraction of a second, done. So your speed of these high speed cameras has to be like hundreds of thousands of points per second. It's not one or two. It's not like static loading. So it's dynamic loading. If you don't have adequate uh, frequency for capturing the data, you will not capture anything. So we did that. <clears throat> Initially, we did some um, tests, lots and lots of uh, tests, lots and lots of uh, strain gauges. And then we had, uh, we had some special system for high-speed cameras. You need to make those uh, markers. Then we, we had concrete ball for this case, and we just hit those barriers and capture the performance. Very, very uh, sophisticated experiment or test. Okay? This is one of my students here, former students. He's now working as a structural engineer. Now, <clears throat> all these are different types of balls, impacting balls, where they are different, uh, they have different masses. These are steel balls. Very heavy balls, 2,000 uh, pounds, 2,200 pounds steel ball, 2,070 pounds, 3,800 pounds, very, very heavy balls, okay? So then we did actual tests. Let me show if I ha have a video here. It should have a video here. So these are the different, uh, let me see. So let me this show this one first to give you some shock effect. Look at this. This is South Korean uh, uh, rock fall captured on somebody's uh, video camera in the, on the dashboard. Look at that. That guy is really lucky to uh, survive this. He just opened the door and he escaped, lucky. Very, very dangerous. He's really lucky. Unbelievable. Hmm. So, we want to see it again? There you go. You are not, you don't expect it, right? You are unsuspecting driver, you are going and boom. And luckily that stopped, that big yeah. one, otherwise it would have just crushed the car. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah. He escaped. <laughs> Interesting, right? So we wanted to simulate, not this, this heavy uh, rockfall, because if it is that heavy rockfall, you cannot really stop with just barriers. So it's impossible, right, roll out test. Uh, steel ball material. So 
this is the small kind of test. This is a smaller test we did initially. And Srikanth was in the middle of everything. He helped, he just arrived, I made him do that. I, <laughs> I am glad he stayed for that long after doing this. So this is without fiber. Then we added fiber and there is a big difference and then made a big difference. This is without fiber. Everything flies. It's very dangerous. And look at these epoxy, uh, epoxy coated bars. They are totally detached. So I was talking about how epoxy coated bars are do not doing their job. That is a, that's an example. Yeah, I, I have still pictures. I'll show you. So we, we'll, we'll uh, uh, quickly go over this. We'll not stop here, but look at this. This is without any uh, fiber in the, in the uh, concrete. Okay? So if you don't have fiber, concrete crumbles, rupture of steel mesh, is happening excessive sliding, very wide extensive cracking. It doesn't really make any sense, right? But if you have, <clears throat> if you have fibers, very good, excellent. We don't have any uh, spalling. It doesn't fly everywhere. Actually, the flying of concrete itself is a problem. It, it can hurt somebody. And without, with fiber, you have this kind of failure. Absolutely no, no splattering or Okay. Now, this is what happens. This is a close-up view of the uh, barrier. So you hit it without any fiber. Everything becomes like crumbles. Just crumble. Everything is crumbled. Uh, okay. This one. This is the shot you want to see. Look at this epoxy coated bars. Who want to sell epoxy coated bar now? I doubt anyone wants to buy or sell epoxy coat. Those guys, there's a huge epoxy coat, epoxy bar um, interest group. They hate me because <laughs> they, they truly hate me. They, they say, oh, we know this, but I'm just trying to show my results. Absolutely no bond. It's worse than FRP bond. If you are worried about FRP bond, this will give you some, some um, you know, some relief some comfort, okay? There is nothing, absolutely nothing. Under impact load, it's not working at all. Then if you add fiber, even if you hit it many, many times, it worked out very well. So, Now, we are not happy with the small test, right? That the small test, the one I showed you, not happy. We said we want bigger test. Okay, you want bigger test? Oh, my sponsor, Ohio Department of Transportation said, okay, take more money. I said, oh yeah, fine, <laughs> why not? So we got a bigger crane. Look at this. Okay, so I don't think I have a video for this. I should have it somewhere, but I don't have it readily available. So we started hitting the barriers with fiber. So that's the difference. Previously, there was no fiber. We were okay, happy with a small front end loader. We kept hitting, no problem. With fiber, it won't fail with small impact. So we got this big crane and we started hitting it with fiber. Perfect. They loved it. They said, this is what we want. So we changed the design, completely changed the design I gave them some alternatives. We gave them a range. We said, for this much, um, for this much of impact, you use this detail. That's what we did. Now, this uh, may, maybe some of you have this uh, digital image correlation cameras, high-speed cameras. With these dots, you can actually capture the motion and everything very nicely. Very, very sophisticated system. 
So we will go to the next one. This is the uh, okay. These are all my students. They get excited. They do a lot of uh, <coughs> LS Dyna. How many of you use LS Dyna? Some of you do probably. So he, my students use LS Dyna. They did very good work actually. Very good work. And then um, they show me the results. Then I say, oh, it's okay. They don't. They're not happy. <laughs> you should say it's so great. So.